shed my skin Diving in, I'm seeking the light Hell, I know I think I'd like to give heaven a try All day long Do the impossible Wherever love is found Miracles abound And all we want Is what we were born for The miracles abound Walk the other mile A lot of salve and a genuine smile Head to head or Heart to heart we day long do the impossible wherever love is found miracles abound and all we want for oh, who's what we were born for let miracles abound Wherever, wherever love is found, miracles are bound. And all we want, all we need, is what we were born for. Let miracles abound. Let miracles abound. Wherever love is found. Thank you. Thank you, Sean Arrington. What a wonderful song. We've heard that before, and it's one of my favorites. So thank you for reminding us all of the principle of love. Abounding. And good morning. Yay! Wow, it's so good to be here in person. And for those of you that are watching on live stream, 
we're going to send you some of this energy that's in the room, but the best way to experience it is to come in in person, if you can, when you can. Now, if you're watching from Alaska, I know there is a Unity Church, and I think it's an anchorage, but we're happy if you're tuning in now. And if you're watching from Japan or China or some other place, you're probably on a different time zone. But take a flight when you can and be here in person because the energy abounds along with the love right here at Unity Athens. We love to open with prayer. And we're also having prayer chaplain on duty today, are we? Mary Connor. So for those of you that are here, another benefit of coming in person is you can go up to the prayer chaplain after the service or before if there's time and say, Mary, would you pray with me? And she's nodding her head, yes. And we're very grateful for all of our prayer chaplains and for Peggy Olson for training and coordinating that. But let's open with prayer. If there's other things going on in your mind, busyness of life or some worries or concerns or stuff, can we always put stuff in quotation marks? We put out a lot of quotation marks today. We put that aside. We turn within. You hear that phrase so often in unity, turning within. Why? Because if you try it, you'll feel that energy of just letting go of the world for a bit and just turning in and knowing as we breathe and as we relax and as we center, knowing that innate and amazing and powerful and loving source, God, whatever your name for the divine, for that energy is within, also all around, but within. And as we turn within, I believe that it's like a step forward to just making life better, taking that step forward, step forward in prayer. So we thank you, divine, holy all, all that is, all that has been, all that will be, for these moments of peace and quietude, for these moments of being, being at one, knowing that oneness with our source, knowing that we are spirit walking in this world, knowing that when we change the way we look at things or think about them, the things we look at or think about change. And we can send out blessings to those that are on our minds and on our hearts, dear ones, family, friends, our world, our country, and see peace, and see love, and see light expressing. If you would consider thanking, feeling a sense of gratitude for something you are truly appreciating right now, and it might be a list, just saying thank you not to something outside of yourself, but to this innate oneness, to this divine being. Thank you. Thank you for joy and delight, rainy mornings and sunny days. Thank you for our ability to know God, to know God. know God and so it is to read our daily word today Mary Connor is going to come up thank you Mary for volunteering you're welcome ah, so good to see uh, all these smiling beautiful faces out here okay so today we are on generous as I give I share God's abundance the limitless resources of infinite spirit flow through my loving heart and clear mind as a never-ending supply of divine ideas. I always have all that I need to live abundantly and to share my abundance with others joyfully and freely. 
I give generously of my resources, talents, and skills, happy to support those I care about. I am generous with praise, gratitude, and encouragement. I give generously of my time. I am a good friend, a de devoted family member, and a compassionate listener. Whenever I give without thought of reciprocation, I center myself in the divine flow. I am a grateful, trusting recipient of Spirit's unfailing generosity and a conduit through which all of God's blessings flow. And from Proverbs 11:25, a generous person will be enriched and one who gives water will get water. Thank you. I do love that Bible verse. For our unity nugget today, those that are here should have a yellow sheet of paper. You can pass one to Sean. I think there's an extra one on the chair somewhere. And if you're watching online um, from home, we don't have a, a slide for this, but you can listen to it as we read it together here at Unity Athens. It's the affirmation on the power of understanding. Or if you've got your computer up in handy, you can also go to unity.org forward slash article forward slash power hyphen understanding. No, I'm not going to repeat that, but you can hunt for it at unity.org. Affirmation on the power of understanding. This is one of our 12 spiritual powers as defined by Charles Fillmore, and he got some of this knowledge from Emma Curtis Hopkins. In this moment, I pause and call upon my spiritual gift of divine understanding for insights into my daily journey. If I'm not sure what path to take, which decision to make, or what words to say, I allow spiritual understanding to guide my mind and my heart. Understanding takes me to deeper levels of compassion, non-judgment, and connection to others. I use the faculty of understanding to see beyond human appearances. Ooh, see beyond human appearances and into the light of truth. I perceive and am grateful for the gifts, the joys, and the presence of the divine in every event and circumstance. I'm going to repeat that one if you want to read that again with me. I perceive and am grateful for the gifts, the joys, and the presence of the divine in every event or circumstance. And the affirmation is, with spiritual understanding, I see myself and others with compassion. And so it is. It's time for announcements. Yay, announcements. We've got some great music coming up in the upcoming weeks. Next Sunday, it will be Dr. Arvin Scott, percussionist. The following Sunday, it will be John Miley and Dan Roth. And then the following Sunday, the last Sunday in July, Rev um, Beth Beloit will be our guest speaker, and she is also a musician. Also next Sunday on the 17th, after the service, we are going to have... It's been postponed a couple times. It will not be postponed again. It'll be next Sunday after the service, the celebration of my ordination. And it was kind of going to be a birthday celebration too, but kind of birthday's over. But I celebrate birthday all year. So we'll have lunch in the back room after the service and can tell you all and maybe share a little video clip of what it was like to be up at Unity Village. I was looking at one of the photos they took from way up above, down on all the people, and there were like 50 people that got either ordained or graduated, and it was so many people. <laughs> it was like something we're going to talk about, like a bird's eye view looking down at the world. So again, that's next Sunday at noonish, right after the service is over. If you can't make it to the service and you want to come to the celebration, that is fine also. Next, if you would like to get on our newsletter and you're not receiving that, send us an email at unityathens at gmail.com. We'll be happy to do that. It's also a good way to send in prayer requests 
or if you have any questions about anything about a Sunday or unity in general, we're happy to answer that. And then finally, the UMAS, U-M-M-A-S, which is from UMAS.org retreat, which is in September this year. We do have the registration forms here, and we do have the um, scholarship applications. So we have two scholarships available. Um, they're still open, so if you're interested in that, you can talk to me after the service. There's quite a few details on both the registration form and the application for the scholarship, and happy to go through those with you. If you're watching online and you would like a copy of that, just let us know, and we will get that to you. So they are on the back table where the t-shirts are, and there's also a greeting card back there. Also, that is the end of announcements. So yay, end of announcements. And that leads us into meditation. So if someone would get our lights, that would be wonderful. If you're home, you might want to just be comfortable, find a spot where you can relax and let go and breathe. Think about your breathing. We'll have some soft music during meditation. We always have at least a minute of deep silence. Why? Because we feel that is where we, well, for most of us, it seems like that helps connect. Maybe you connect better when the music is loud and going on. But I know I like to have some deep silence at times during meditation to help me turn within and to feel that essence of God, whatever your name for the divine is, with you. Sometimes nudges may come during that time. Sometimes it may happen later. Just being open to guidance and well-being. So perhaps consider grounding yourself with your feet on Mother Earth, feeling that energy, those ions coming up. Healing energy, soothing energy, connection energy. We breathe, holding it just as long as we're comfortable and then letting go. sense of all is wellness, allowing comfort to come into your heart and your mind if you're struggling with something, if you're feeling sad or alone or questioning. Allow that divine guidance and love and comfort to move in. We breathe. Breathe and let go. to repeat a mantra or a phrase. God loves me, or spirit is, or peace, or love. Mr. Eckhart said, if the only prayer we ever say is thank you, God, that will suffice. We move into that deeper quiet. there for a moment.
abundance. Joy. And we focus again on the breath. Consider sending out a blessing to someone that's on your mind or on your heart. The energy of that touches them. They feel that love. They may even feel a virtual hug from you. Again, focusing on our breath. Opening our eyes when we're ready. And turning the lights on. And the beautiful sunlight came on too. Thank you for turning the sunlight on, Mary. We'll have another song from wonderful Sean Arrington followed by our message. Sometimes fall apart, sometimes never stop.
Sometimes I'm afraid Sometimes it seems nothing's ever I can wake up any time I can wake up any time I, I can wake up any time I like I like to be I love that, Sean. Did you just write that? Yes. Awesome. It wrote, it wrote you. Okay. It just <laughs> kind of came through in a dream, and you did a wonderful job on it. Thank you for being here today. And we're so glad to be back in person and to have live music again and have the energy of people in the room. So there's all that. I'm always glad to have people here and feel that energy. My topic changed about four times this week, so I won't, I won't give four messages. <laughs> thank, thank you, God. Um, and, and that happens, you know, things change in the world, and then I go like, mm, yeah, maybe we should talk about this, maybe we should talk about that. So we're gonna talk about standing firm and finding perhaps new ways to look at things, whether they're old things or they're new things, and looking from a different perspective. We teach these truth principles, been handed down for you know much longer than the Fillmore's or um, Ernest Holmes. They've been handed down from Plato. They've been handed down from many, many scholars over the years. Emerson in the United States was huge on some of these principles. Why have they been handed down? Why do they last so long? Because they work. Because it's a new way of looking at old things. This is from Frank B. Whitney who was a unity author and minister, and I understand he was the one that started the idea of the daily word that we read from so often, and he was editor for a while. And he wrote this, stand firm, he used exclamation points quite a bit, stand firm, rise to the consciousness that there is something within you that is unmoved by things of the world. And as soon as I read that, I thought about the poem that we read last week um, called Promise Yourself by Christian D. Larson. It's kind of like an instruction. Rise to the consciousness that there's something within you that is unmoved by things of the world. Well, hey, we've been moved a lot by things of the world over the last months, okay? Years. <laughs> but there's something in us. And that thing in us that is unmoved is the thing, that core, that base that we can go to when we're feeling troubled, when we want to change, when we're feeling angry, when we're, and what the heck is happening? Find the power within you that is like a strong tower of defense, an immovable pillar. Enter into the high consciousness from which you cannot be swerved by things of the outer world. So next time somebody wants to talk about the news or get into a conversation that you're not comfortable with, you can say, I will not be swerved. And they will look at you funny. <laughs> but that's okay. Know the truth that no person or thing can take from you the all-conquering spirit of God within you. Standing firm. You might want to do that with your feet. feels kind of good, actually. Standing firm is but loyalty to truth, with a capital T. Refusing to believe in the power of evil is simply loyalty to God the good. Those who stand with God never stand alone. And unity teaches there is no force for evil. There's only a force for good. We may see things in the world that we consider to be evil, but there's no force for evil. Even the thought of standing firm 
causes us to rise to the grandeur of our divine heritage. We feel something within us that is never touched by winds of chance or caprice. There is something within us that is never changed by outer conditions, something upon which we can always rely, something telling us that it is spirit, eternal, immovable. And from Proverbs 18, verse 10, the Lord, God, is a strong tower. These are tools, so that's a tool you can use. You know, when something's upsetting you or you just want to change the world, and it seems like an impossible act from a few people or this or that side of politics, think of yourself as a strong tower. Think of yourself as making a difference. From Myrtle Fillmore, sometimes, co-founder of Unity, sometimes we fear that we have not the ability to do the things we ought to do. We feel there are obstacles in the way. If there are obstacles, we have made them. God never put anything in the way of progress. And I know there's some teachings in different belief systems that God gave us this or that to make us stronger or this or that to prove our merit or our worth. No, you know, there are things that happen to us. But what we have is this God self within us that helps us move through it. And this is from the Unity author Winifred Wilkinson Hausman. Understanding, which is our spiritual faculty for this month and which we read from on the yellow sheet, Understanding is important in developing our spiritual nature because it is the faculty, the spiritual faculty, that puts feet under our prayers and gives our spiritual activity something to stand on. Stand on. A couple things that went on this week, um, and I don't talk usually a whole lot about the news, but there was a very interesting thing that happened in Elberton um, with the Georgia Guidestones. I've been there. There's controversy about it. There's different sides of looking at it. Like, I always liked the structures themselves. When I read the words, I wasn't particularly impressed by them, but it had this mysterious thing about it. And I know people have gone out there at solstice and at dawn, and it felt sort of like um, some of the temples from the Mayan Empire where the light comes through it a certain way. Um, and then all of a sudden, this huge thing, this tower, this granite structure, one part of it got destroyed from an act of violence, actually. And it just as I, I was watching this and I was, you know, reading different things that I didn't necessarily want to read about it, and then all the controversy and people saying things, and I thought, what is it that's bothering me about this so much? Well, something that was beautiful to look at in its own way, like I said, I didn't much care for the words, some people do, um, suddenly wasn't there. And then there seemed like there was some hate involved and some anger or some need to destroy things. And then it all came down. And this came to me while I was meditating, which is sort of like the universe talking to me. Out of chaos, new things are born. That's what started it. And I said, oh. There's a whole lot of chaos going around God that lives in my attic or in the sky, which God doesn't live there. There's been a whole lot of chaos, apparent chaos. Out of chaos, new things are born. When what is seems to crumble, then stronger, more solid things are built. And then when I was receiving that, I was thinking, okay, yeah, there's some laws that are changing that I didn't like the change, but stronger things can come. 
as a country, we're growing in some very interesting ways. Um, people are becoming more aware of how they should be acting and equality and diversity and equity. It went on, as we witness what we don't want and focus on what we do want from a core of love, we make a difference. Namaste. Out of chaos, old things crumble. And they are reborn. So that may help you. I know it helped me this week as I kind of kept rethinking this and that and the other. So how do we look at things from a higher point of view? Long ago, I had um, a little tool that I used. I was in a workplace where sometimes people didn't act the way I wanted them to. <laughs> and I wasn't in charge, and I had no charge over any of these people. And I was like, why are these people acting like this? You know, and one was the owner's family member, and it was just a lot of tension in that office. So, I don't know if I got the idea from somewhere else, but one of my little tools that I would use at that time was to picture myself sitting on the moon or way out in space, but able to see what was going on. And I was like, oh, it's a whole different perspective when I'm way up there, you know? Whole different perspective. So that felt very positive. The thing that didn't feel very positive was another technique that I used where I would just turn the person into a large pink teddy bear and set them somewhere out in space with a little squeaky voice. Now, that wasn't like the best consciousness to do, but it worked also because it would make me smile and I could just smile at the person because I wasn't seeing them in their form in the business. I was seeing them as this huge pink teddy bear with a little squeaky voice. So don't use that and, and put my name on it. <laughs> but it's that idea of perspective, is it not? Coming from a higher perspective at what's going on around us. Moving that energy, allowing new ways of looking at things, allowing ourselves to be more understanding, you know? To know, we don't always know that person at that job I don't know what they were going on, what was going on inside of them, or what kind of issues they might have had at home or somewhere else, or their upbringing. I put it all on them instead of realizing my perception in that was huge to raise myself up. It also helps me to pause when I'm upset, when I'm reacting to somebody, when I'm even reacting to news or things in the world, to pause. I wish I had known how to do that better back then. If someone would come up to me and start a squabble over some work thing, to be able to pause and center, right? To kind of remove myself from any of the things that might be going on in that energy between me and that other person and just look at it from a higher point of view to kind of, this makes sense for analogy, to kind of step into my God self even though our God self is always with us. And we can relate that, or I can, that kind of circumstance to the things I don't like that are going on in our world. I don't know all the history of every person. I can be pointing at this one or that one and you need to change this law or well, look what you did or whatever. I can't change them. I can change the way I look at things. And as we say often here, when we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Easy to remember. rise above the road that we're on, which is a path that we're going through life, just feel yourself elevated, if you will, whether you do that through meditation or prayer or conscious thinking and believing, just raise yourself up a bit from that road. How am I moving forward? What difference can I make 
in this world in my lifetime? What can I do today or in the days ahead to make a difference? For me, I'd like to donate to causes that are making positive change. Or I like to write in my journal what I really want to see or how I'm dealing with things. And if it's our self, our inner self, you know, the, the conflict that often we have within ourselves. And when we look at other people that are committing crimes or doing things that seem unbelievably evil, the word came up earlier, when it's really not. It's discord. It's choices that are horrible. To try to see into that person what they may have gone through in their life. And then, because we can't change that, like with some of these shooters and that, we can't change it after the act happened. But what we can do is send out love and light to everybody. When you're walking down the street or driving in your car, or passing a house while you're driving in your car or riding your bike or whatever it is, to send out love and light. If you see someone in the store or somewhere else that looks upset, and maybe it's not showing on their face or their countenance. Maybe ask spirit, okay, well, I'm out today. If there's someone that needs my love and my blessing, would you just give me a little nudge or a big nudge or, you know, hit me over the head? <laughs> oh, that makes the mic go off. Um, just, you know, give me a little nudge where to send some light. Or maybe it's someone I know that I can write a note to or give a phone call to or put a post up on Facebook or something saying, you're doing great. You'll get through this. We do make a difference. We can't fix everything. The news can get us down. It's been a, a I'll say it, might not seem too positive, but it's been a two year, two and a half years that have been extremely interesting and rough for many people. Okay, but we are getting through it. We, it's been said again and again, we've been born for these times. We are here, born for these times, to make a difference, to do something in the world. And it all begins again from within. When we meditate, when we read things that uplift us, that move our spirit, when we pray, however we pray, that makes that difference. That opens us up, I believe, as conduits of love and light and energy. So I'm going to read this again to close the message by Frank B. Whitney. And I didn't mention in the announcements, we have a whole table full of booklets over there. And these two particular ones are the newest, and there's plenty of them over there. Please take all the booklets you want, because um, we got a lot of booklets, and they're very inspiring. I have an article in this one. Always got to self-promote. Um, but there's a whole lot of really good booklets over there. So Frank B. Whitney. Stand firm. Rise to the consciousness that there is something within you that is unmoved by things of the world. Find the power within you that is like a strong tower of defense, an immovable pillar, stronger than those guideposts, right? Stronger than that. Enter into the high consciousness from which you cannot be swerved by things of the outer world. Know the truth that no person or thing can take from you the all-conquering spirit of God that is within you. Standing firm is but loyalty to truth, to truth teachings. Refusing to believe in the power of evil is simply loyalty to God, the good. Those who stand with God, spirit, the divine, whatever your name for it is, never stand alone. Even the thought, just the thought of standing firm causes us to rise to the grandeur of our divine heritage, that new perspective. We feel something within us 
that is never touched by winds of chance or caprice. There's something within us that is never changed by outer conditions. So when we're feeling changed by those outer conditions, there's something that isn't. That core of us can't be touched by those conditions. Something upon which we can always rely, something telling us that it is spirit, eternal, immovable. And again, from Proverbs, the Lord, God, your name for the divine, is a strong tower. I hope that helps you in this day and in the days ahead. And if you're dealing with things that, you know, might not be in the news, might be in your life, your family, or whatever, in your mind, because aren't our minds busy? <laughs> I have a very busy mind. Um, that it helps you, that you're able to focus and look this up, and if you want a copy of it, we have some here. We can always make a copy, and we can send them to you. Just let us know by sending us an email, unityathens at gmail.com, and that's also where you can get our, that's how you can get our weekly e-newsletter, unityathens at gmail.com. And let us know, and come in person, and next week we're celebrating my second ordination, a friend of mine said, okay, are you like, you got two ordinations here, you like Rev squared? And I'm like, oh, Rev squared! <laughs> R-E-V with a little two, is that an integer or whatever they call it? Something, There's, yeah, my math skills, right? Rev squared. Um, I may just figure out a way to make a little thing on that. So we're celebrating that after the service next Sunday at noon. There'll be more folks here. Thank you for being here, those that are here in person. The energy is wonderful. Thank you at home for those of you that are at home. We are going to have our offering, and we're going to have some, another song by Sean. And there is a basket over there, and there's baskets all around the room. We're not going to pass the basket. I know many people donate online. Please consider supporting Unity Athens. We do really appreciate that. So if you'd like to make a donation or support, any of the baskets are fine. Um, but first, we're going to bless our abundance. So what I like to do, I didn't bring it up here, it's in the back. I like to hold the thought of my gift or my gift over my heart. And as we give, we receive. But it's this stream, this constant stream of abundance that flows to us when we're open to it. And we're open to it by not thinking lack and limitation, but thinking abundance. I was looking at the wonderful affirmations, and we have copies of these too, by John Randolph Price. There was one for 10 days in a row, for 40 days you do it. Every time I've done that, surprising abundance has flowed in even more. It's so number one, I'll just read this. God is lavish, unfailing abundance, the rich omnipresent substance of the universe, this all-providing source of infinite prosperity is individualized as me, the reality of me. Feel that for yourself, an all-providing source of infinite prosperity individualized as you, the reality of you. And we say our love offering affirmation, and there's ways to donate if you're at home. Just go to our website at unityathens.com or use our easy text. And could we put the affirmation? There we go. Uh, when you get to the thank you, God, we look at all names of God. We are not saying you have to call it this or that, so you can use your name for the divine. If you'd like, we can say this together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. I am so blessed. Thank you, infinite spirit. Amen, and so it is. Thank you for supporting Unity Athens. It means the world to us. Sean, another song, please? Yes. Then we'll have our closing. Yes, that was a strong yes. That yes. was yes. 
Yes, another song. Do you love music? I love music. You love music. We love your music. So thank, thank you, you so much for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, Michelle Arrington, Sean's wife, has yes. an amazing practice of Yamana. Yamana body rolling. <laughs> Yamana body. I know. Yes. It's wonderful. She's so trained in so many mm -hmm. modalities of this. Yes, she does Yamana body rolling, Nia dance, which is done Nia, which like is that. a really fun way to get some exercise with some music and some coordinated movement. Um, she does yoga and chair yoga sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, there is. Um, Older. Yes, I took it once. Um, Not that I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a fast laugh. <laughs> if she's if she's watching right now, she's yeah. trying to telegraph the to age, me ages, else. ageless, ageless grace, ageless grace. She yes. gave me so I could tell you. Thank okay, you. have a song. <laughs> you can find her online, Elevate Online Studio, and she does everything right out of our living room, which is now the studio. And I'm her tech guy, and it's all lit up, and it's it's easy to do, and um, you can you can share what she does from your own private, you know, space set aside for such things. Yeah, she'd love to have you. Yeah, exactly. Incense, whatever whatever you're into there, it's your it's your space. So if you're familiar with Marianne Williamson, then you have heard a version of this. I let her write the song and I wrote the words. And she doesn't know about it, I'm sure, but I hope she would not disapprove. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna put, change the key here. Where's my... Oh yeah, that's more fun. got a little groove. Our deepest fear ain't that we can't do it. We worry more Our light, our light, not our darkness, no. Tricks us into doubting our very worth. Asking questions like, who am I to be brilliant? Mm. Who am I to be gorgeous? Well. Are a child. You are a child of. You are a child of God. And my, oh my, what a child of God. You're playing small. It ain't helping us so. You ain't too bright. Thinking you're too low. Shine along, yeah, baby. 
romantic The crowd swelled. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sean. Remember, we have booklets available. If you're here for the first time, we have welcome packets over on that table. We'd love to chat afterwards. We're going to bless our planet. I could do this without dropping the planet. Okay, that would that would be okay. <laughs> So as Kevin plays our peace song, let there be peace on earth. You can sing along if you'd like, or you can just send out love and light to our beautiful Mother Earth. We see her healthy and balanced and whole. If the Mary Connors our prayer chaplain today, if you'd like to pray with Mary, just go up to her after the service and say, would you pray with me, Mary? And she'll take you off to the back room where there's space and quiet and you can pray together. So, Kevin, let us have that. We're just seeing you all having a wonderful week, and thank you so much for being here. Well, we could use the cheering again. If, you know, that, like, that always is good. <laughs> Cheer for our world. If anyone else wants to come up and bless the world with me, that's fine. You, you will be on camera. Let's say heads up. which is on the wall. The light of God surrounds us. Feel that. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. And so it is. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you, Kevin, as always, for running everything and coming in early and setting it all up. And thank you, Sean, for your wonderful music. And thank you all for being here. Namaste. We wait for Kevin to give me the sign. And thank you, everybody from home. Please let us know that you're on with a little heart or a like or something or a little note. <laughs>